In this week's news, we'll be reporting on new FDA approvals in myeloma, kidney cancer, and melanoma, the top stories from the 20th Society for Neuro-Oncology annual scientific meeting, and exciting new data from the 12th International Congress of the Society for Melanoma Research. All this and more coming up. Starting off today, the FDA has approved yet another new agent for multiple myeloma. Exazomib is the first orally delivered proteasome inhibitor and is now approved for in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone for the treatment of patients who have received at least one prior therapy. The safety and efficacy data on exazomib that supported the approval came from a trial involving 722 patients with relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma. Results showed that in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone, exazomib was associated with mean progression-free survival of 20.6 months versus 14.7 months for patients who received lenalidomide and dexamethasone without the new agent. This on the heels of an FDA approval for anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody daratumumab in previously treated patients is the third drug for multiple myeloma approved this year. The novel HDAC inhibitor, penobinostat, was approved back in February. In addition, the FDA approved nivolumab for use in patients with metastatic renal cell carcinoma following prior anti-angiogenic therapy. The approval was based on an extension in overall survival shown in the Checkmate 025 trial. In the pivotal phase 3 study, nivolumab reduced the risk of death by 27% when compared with everolimus and improved survival by 5.4 months. Grade 3 or 4 adverse events were also lower with the PD-1 inhibitor compared with everolimus. The approval for nivolumab follows a breakthrough therapy designation and was granted nearly 4 months ahead of schedule. Next, the FDA has just approved nivolumab for use as an upfront therapy for patients with BRAF wild-type advanced melanoma. Long-term data continue to show sustained improvements in overall survival with nivolumab alone or in combination with ipilimumab as a frontline treatment for advanced melanoma, according to two presentations at the 2015 Society for Melanoma Research Annual Meeting held this week in San Francisco. In the Phase 3 Checkmate 066 trial, the two-year OS rate with frontline nivolumab was 57.7% compared with 26.7% for decarbazine. Earlier this year, nivolumab was approved in combination with ipilimumab for patients with advanced melanoma. The updated Phase 1b data of nivolumab plus ipilimumab, also presented at the SMR meeting, showed a survival rate of 68% after a median of 32.7 months. This trial is the longest follow-up that we have for patients from a Phase 3 trial for a PD-1 antibody. It shows the highest two-year survival for any PD-1 therapy in advanced melanoma, said study author Victoria Atkinson of Princess Alexandra Hospital in Queensland, Australia. More on the melanoma front, the FDA granted full approval of the combination dibrafenib and trametinib for the treatment of patients with BRAF V600 EOR-K mutant unresectable or metastatic melanoma. Dibrafenib is a BRAF inhibitor, while trametinib is a MEK inhibitor. The combination was initially approved in 2014 based on Phase two data through the FDA's accelerated approval program and reviewed under priority review designation. The approval was contingent on the results of the pivotal Phase three COMBI-D study comparing first-line dibrafenib plus trametinib to dibrafenib plus placebo in patients with stage 3C or 4 BRAF-positive melanoma. Updated results, which were presented by Georgina Long at ASCO this year, showed that the combination improved overall survival, 25 months over 18.7 months with dibrafenib alone. The overall response rates were 66% and 51% respectively. Similar results were achieved in the COMBI-V study looking at dibrafenib plus trametinib versus vemurafenib monotherapy. In a pooled analysis of the two studies, grade three or four adverse events reported in more than 2% of patients on the combination were hypertension, pyrexia, and hemorrhage. In COMBI-D, 11% of patients discontinued the combination due to side effects. In another pooled analysis of three randomized clinical trials and more than 600 patients enrolled, frontline treatment of BRAF-positive metastatic melanoma with dibrafenib and trametinib was most successful in patients who had normal LDH levels and less than three disease sites. These patients had one-year overall survival of 90% and a three-year survival of 70%. 
Patients who experienced a complete response also did very well, said Dr. Long. 95% were alive at one year and 88% were alive at three years after treatment. Final overall survival results for a similar regimen from the Phase 3 COBRIM study were also presented at the SMR meeting. Treatment with the BRAF inhibitor, vemurafenib, and MEK inhibitor, cobimetinib, improved overall survival by 4.9 months compared with vemurafenib alone for patients with previously untreated BRAF mutant advanced melanoma. In the updated findings of the 495 patient study showed a median survival of 22.3 months with the combination compared with 17.4 months for vemurafenib alone, translating to a 30% reduction in the risk of death. Two weeks ago, the FDA approved the combination of vemurafenib and cobimetinib as a treatment for patients with BRAF-positive metastatic or unresectable melanoma, based on an extension and progression-free survival from previously reported COBRIM study results. An approval decision from the European Commission is anticipated before the end of 2015. Additional exploration of this regimen include an adjuvant study and one in combination with the PD-L1 inhibitor atezolizumab for BRF-positive metastatic melanoma. In other melanoma news, in a study of pembrolizumab, Keynote 029, the PD-1 blocker was combined with low-dose ipilimumab. The combination was tolerable and effective for patients with advanced melanoma and had an overall response rate of 56%. The study enrolled 72 patients, 84% of whom had PD-L1 positive tumors. The response rates in newly diagnosed and previously treated patients were 57% and 44% respectively. The disease control rate was 79%. The rate of grade 3 or 4 toxicities with the combination was 36% and 54% of patients had immune-mediated toxicities, similar to that seen in other trials exploring the combination of PD-1 and CTLA-4 inhibition, said lead investigator Georgina Long, a medical oncologist at the Melanoma Institute in Australia. The majority of patients with ongoing adverse events experience thyroid-related side effects, Long said. Other common immune-mediated adverse events were pneumonitis and colitis. Hypophysitis was more common in this trial than we've seen in similar studies, but it's difficult to see why that occurred. We were very aware of the side effect during the study, and so that may be one explanation. Next, positive news for patients with glioblastoma was reported from the Society for Neuro-Oncology annual meeting in San Antonio this week. Investigators unveiled mid-stage data on the experimental cancer vaccine rindopepamint. Rindopepamint, which is being evaluated in combination with bevacizumab, prolonged progression-free survival and overall survival compared with bevacizumab alone. In 73 patients studied, the six-month progression-free survival rate was 28% with the vaccine versus 16% with bevacizumab alone, while the two-year survival rate was 25% for the vaccine versus 0% without it. Median survival was 11.3 months in the combination group compared with 9.3 months in the bevacizumab-only group. Additionally, the objective response rates were 30% versus 18%. 50% of the patients in the vaccine group, compared with 26% in the bevacizumab-only group, were able to discontinue steroid therapy for at least two months. The preliminary results for recurrent glioblastoma are similar to what was reported in the upfront setting, as studies continue for this promising immunotherapy. In other news from the meeting, a post-hoc analysis of the Phase 3 EF14 trial showed that the addition of Optune to temozolomide and or bevacizumab improved survival in patients with glioblastoma who developed recurrent disease. Optune reduced the risk of death by 30% when combined with temozolomide as second-line therapy and 39% when combined with bevacizumab with or without chemotherapy in patients receiving the tumor-treating electric fields. The trial randomized patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma following chemoradiotherapy to Optune plus adjuvant temozolomide or temozolomide alone. At progression, patients in the chemotherapy alone arm could receive second-line chemotherapy and patients in the Optune arm could continue the tumor-treating fields with second-line chemotherapy. Median overall survival among patients receiving second-line Optune plus temozolomide versus temozolomide alone was 11.8 versus 9.2 months, and use of Optune translated to a 51% reduction in the risk of death. 
43% of patients received second-line bevacizumab with or without chemotherapy. In this group, overall survival was 11.8 months among patients who also received Optune versus 9.0 months for bevacizumab with or without chemotherapy. The risk of death in the Optune treated group was reduced by 57%. Optune, formerly called Novo TTF 100A, is a portable battery operated device that attaches directly to the patient's head to deliver tumor treating fields to the brain. FDA initially approved Optune in 2011 as a monotherapy for adults with progressive glioblastoma. Based on the result of the EF14 trial, the FDA expanded the indication in October 2015 to include patients with newly diagnosed GBM following surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. Next, findings from a subgroup of patients enrolled in a Phase II study assessing the dendritic vaccine ICT-107 showed promise and merit further exploration in a Phase III study. According to lead investigator Patrick Wen from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, a group of patients who had HLA-A2 positive, newly diagnosed glioblastoma and responded to the vaccine had substantially improved overall survival. ICT-107 is an autologous dendritic cell immunotherapy that targets six glioblastoma-associated antigens. For responders, survival was extended by 52% compared with 29% in non-responders. Progression-free survival was extended by 41% versus 15% in non-responders. Of the 124 patients enrolled, 77 were HLA-A2 positive. The randomized control phase three registration trial will enroll more than 400 HLA-A2 positive patients in the United States, Canada, and Europe. Patients will be randomized to temozolomide plus or minus ICT-107. And that'll do it. Thank you for watching On Clive News. I'm Gina Columbus.